In the name of the one holy and living God, amen. Earlier this week, uh, there was a video going around Facebook that I, too, posted on my page. Maybe some of you saw it. Apropos of the lovely weather we've had. It uh, showed a boy, probably about five years old, and he was bundled from head to toe in all the snow gear. He got his snow pants on, he had his snow jacket with his hat covered with the hood, just all zipped up. And his parents has obviously sent him out there to aid in the massive shoveling effort that we all experienced. So he had his little blue shovel, and there he was chipping away at it, taking a little scoop here and there. And all of a sudden he stopped, put a shovel like this and looked around, all that snow. He threw his shovel down and he said, Jesus, make it warm. (laughs) Oh, we all probably had a similar thought and I bet we all know what that prayer is like. God, hey you up there in your nice cozy heaven, get down here and do something about this. Whatever this happens to be in our present and personal circumstance. Now, as a child, of course, that's natural. Child is dependent. Parents or the adults that care for us, they create the entire world we know. And even though we want our autonomy from that, it's a challenging process. Psychologists remind us that that development takes years because we want to be in control we want to be fully responsible we want to be on our own but it's so nice to be cared for especially when things go wrong isn't it and it's so nice when we can always look outside ourselves to people we believe can solve or fix our problems we had a funeral here yesterday and the son of the deceased, Pat Romero, in his remarks, he's a middle-aged man, and he said, you know, everybody looks at you and thinks, oh, you're an adult, but you know there's always this child inside of you. You always still relate to that. He said, you know, when your parent dies, there's really a shift in your awareness around who you are. Now, Sigmund Freud, who believed that the Judeo-Christian God was simply the wish fulfillment of humanity for the perfect parent, he said that one sign of a mature individual is somebody who's able to view their parents objectively, to see them not as perfect people, but fallible people who are no different than the rest of us, struggling with all the same things we struggle with, but it takes some time to get there. There is a phenomenal book by Richard Rohr called Falling Upwards, Spirituality for the Second Half of Life. And he makes a parallel case in terms of our faith life. He says we are called continuously into a maturation process in terms of our relationship, our understanding of God. Because indeed, we could fall into God being something out there, the perfect parent created to fulfill our wishes. But we kind of have to grow out of that understanding, that childlike notion. We all get told it, a man with a beard on a throne, doling out rewards and punishments, the Santa Claus God of checklists and getting it right. But Rohr says that is in no way connected to the redemption and freedom and forgiveness that is revealed through the life of Jesus Christ. And he opens his book with this quote, the greatest and most important problems of life are fundamentally unsolvable. They can't be solved. They can only be outgrown. Now that idea, for me, resonates a lot with our scripture readings this morning. God through the voice of the prophet Jeremiah, God through the voice of the disciple Paul, God through the person of Jesus Christ, encouraging us to push beyond early and easy conceptions, 
conceptions that cause us to look up and say, fix it. Instead of turning our gaze within here towards the God-given capabilities that every single one of us has been given to practice and imitate the ways of God in our daily lives. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, God says. Before we were even a twinkle in our parents' eyes, God knew us. This is amazing. (laughs) That knowledge that every single part of your being was formed by God. And not just formed, but known inside and out. That's why Paul reiterates this understanding in that letter we heard when he says, Now, right now, I know only in part in this life. But when I am there face to face, then I will know God fully even as I have always fully been known. What would it mean to live each day with that awareness? That everything you do is within God all the time. Well, Jeremiah says, yeah, I can't do that. (laughs) And I think uh, we can relate to that, right? That's a pretty high level of awareness to maintain. But God says, you can You can try because you're mine and you're chosen and you can go where I send you and you can speak the words I give you and you can do it fearlessly. No fear. Because fear, like pain or suffering, is one of those great problems that cannot be solved. It can only be outgrown. Now, I know you all know the scripture verse. There is no fear in love. But perfect fear casts out love. I'm sorry. Perfect love casts out fear. That would be really blasphemous if I said it the other way. That's a great analogy for what we get wrong about perfection. Perfection is not this idea of always getting it right, but trying to live within the wholeness. Trying to live within the wholeness God has created for us. Jesus is asking the people in his synagogue, in his church, to cast out fear with love. At first, they're all excited because their hometown boy has stood up in the middle of their church and proclaimed, the good news of God is here. I have come to say it is now time for release and redemption and freedom. And they're all like, yay. He's like, but not just for you, for everybody, for all those people you don't necessarily want to see in the synagogue, in the church, for all those people outside your boundaries. He says, remember back when Elijah and Elisha were prophets? They weren't sent to the chosen of Israel. They were sent to Syria to bring blessings to those outside of the realm of God. That is the love I am asking you to proclaim. It doesn't seem to sit well with the people in that church because they try to hurl Jesus off a cliff. Fear is a powerful thing. In our world, we certainly struggle with it, don't we? We have many voices in our world right now encouraging us to choose fear over love. Now, in this book, Falling Upwards, Rohr says that, you know, when we're kids, of course we have to make boundaries. Of course we build boxes and houses and have rules and regulations. That's what a child needs. That's black and white thinking. That's the early part of our development. He quotes the poem that you all know of Frost, good fences make good neighbors. But there comes a time, like snowstorms, when you have to go across the fences. You have to meet the neighbors. The boundaries become fluid. I do believe there's something about loving neighbor as self. Jesus' words might be hard because they're so linked to a specific time and place, although with a lot of connection to ours. But Paul frames it in a way that is timeless. The perfect love of God, the whole love of God that casts out fear isn't about doing things perfectly. It's about paying attention in our whole lives, not a religious sphere of our lives, aware of who we are within ourselves and who we are with other people all the time. 
You know, so often this First Corinthians passage, we hear it at weddings, which is a shame. Because that love gets linked with Valentine's Day love or romantic notions of love. And that's not at all what it's talking about. This passage is meant to be read at funerals. I've done it at three funerals in the recent past. And it is the one that speaks to the love beyond our being. The love that holds us at all times. The God is love, love. Describing how God loves us so that we might in turn live lives imitating that. God is patient. God is kind. God is never boastful or arrogant or rude. God doesn't insist on God's way. We've got so many stories to remind us of that. God is never envious or irritable or boastful. God would never rejoice in our wrongdoing. God rejoices in truth, which, as we know, sets us free. And that God, who has known each of us from before we were born, created us for that, to be that. Knowing we don't get it right all the time, but just as God gives us second and third and 50th chances to try again, we too have that same potential that same capacity for ourselves and for all those that we are in relationship with. You know, that excerpt from 1 Corinthians could be a daily meditation each and every day to examine how we are living our lives and the fruits of the relationships we're engaged with. Because the most important problems in life cannot be solved. They can only be outgrown. Every day we want something to be different than it is. We want snow to melt. We want people to change. We want our circumstances to change. We want something to not be as it is. But it is. So we are given the choice to grow in those practices and increase our capacity for generosity and gratitude towards other people so that we may feel the fruits of living that love in our lives. Moment by moment and day by day, redemption and release and the freedom of God's love is available all the time, all around us. If we choose to see it and if we choose to be it. Amen.